Welcome to the Sexual Miseducation of Black Men in America. I'm your host, A.B. Bracewell, and I want you to take a journey with me as we dive into the psychological, the emotional, and relational lessons, unhealthy lessons that Black men have learned and how it affects us, how it affects our community, and how it affects the women that we come in contact with. So I've heard black men called by many names, dogs, pigs, sexist, misogynistic, chauvinistic, womanizers, and of recent F-boys. Many are often looked, as, looked at as predators, looked at as users, manipulators, especially when it comes to sex. Due to our own fleshly misconduct, we are characterized as being sexually out of control and undisciplined. From the outside looking in, I'm sure that these labels describe us perfectly to some people. However, there are other words that are really used to explain us. There are some words that are hidden underneath the surface of our behaviors. Things that you cannot see with the naked eye and may not think about if you have chosen to view Black men as villains. After years of working with boys, counseling men, fellowshipping with them, and being a man myself all my life, I've grown to understand that there's another perspective. Many of us do not care to explore the other side of what Black men are going through. And there might be two reasons. Either because their minds are made up of what we are and who we are, or because if they did, their assessment of Black men might have to be looked from a different angle. Through working with Black men, I have learned new words to describe many of my brothers. Words such as hurt, pained, traumatized, misdirected, and dysfunction. These are adjectives that are regularly attached, that these are adjectives that are not regularly attached to our behaviors. No, but it's that emotional and that mental pain and disorders uh, that, that's really the bitter root of what a man unhealthy sexual patterns come from. The hurt that we've caused from the way we objectify women, the way we devalue our female counterparts, the way we mistreat our sisters, it all stems from hurt that's inside of us. See, over the past few days, the internet has been going crazy. It's really been going bonkers over the past few days. And it's really been seeing, I've been seeing a lot of talk about the situation with the baby. And um, I think his the mother of his child, I think her name is Denali. Uh, I could be mis mispronouncing it. Now, it's sad to see how two people just broadcast their conflict on social media for the world to be entertained by. You know, some things I feel still needs to be kept private, but I understand that's the world we live in and everything that we do have to go, has to go live. So as we watch the two of them shout insults at each other, call the police on each other, threaten each other, the dysfunction, the hurt, and the pain becomes more and more evident every time I see a different video of it. It's my prayer that they learn how to respectfully co-parent for the health, for the healthy development of their daughter. That's really my prayer. That's what I hope comes out of all that is for them. So by now, I'm sure that the baby is being labeled probably as a deadbeat by some people, sperm donor, maybe a trash dad, et cetera, all the names that, um, that, that, that we're called sometimes. And I'm not here to defend or to, or to say that, that, um, that he is. 
because I don't know the the details of his relationship with the mother of his kids or the details of the relationship with his kids. You know, I don't know any of that stuff. Um, but what I do know without a shadow of a doubt, what's for certain after when I look at the baby and I look at the situation and I do some research, I do know that that brother is struggling. He's struggling with some internal pain. See, just like many of us brothers that are being, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? That, that's being undisciplined with our sexuality, devaluing our own seeds, exploiting women, that's careless and bringing children into this world, that's carelessly bringing children into this world. As I looked at some of the things or looked up some of the things that the baby have been through over the past few years, there's no doubt in my mind that that brother is dealing with some struggles, he's dealing with some pain, he's dealing with some serious trauma. Let's just look at a few things that I found about the baby in the past couple of, that he's been through in the past few years. At the age of 19, he shot and killed a man. I believe it was in Walmart. That by itself is traumatizing. Gun violence is always traumatizing. And as you know, in our communities today, our black brothers are either victims or we're victimizing someone else with gun violence. In 2019, he lost his father. His second album, I believe, was called Kirk. And it was like pictures of his father on that album. It was a dedication to his father's last name. In 2020, just last year, he lost his brother. His brother died of, a, I think, a self-inflicted gun wound. And in that same year, he was incarcerated for uh, a battery charge. I believe I read it was out in Texas or somewhere, but he was incarcerated for a short period of time for a battery charge. Battery. So, and there's no telling what has happened in that man's life before he became rich and famous, before anyone cared who he was or what he went through. There's no telling how deep the history of trauma and pain goes with him. See, typically a person that goes through stuff like this in such a short period of time, they'll be sitting across from me in my office receiving some type of therapy. They'll be receiving some, receiving some type of grief counseling. They'll be dealing with the depression. Um, I'll be helping them to control some of those impulsive behaviors they display. He'll need some help learning how to process the feelings that connected to the, all the trauma that he's been through in the past few years, the gun violence, incarceration, the loss of close family members. But just like many of us black men, instead of uh, seeking out the proper healing, we go to find sexual healing. Thinking that we can hump away the pain, thinking we can sex away the pain. So this doesn't only apply to the baby, this applies to a lot of Black men, a lot of my brothers, um, including myself in the past. So this is just not just about the baby. It's about us in general in a miseducation about sex that we receive. See, a great number of us have been programmed to believe that Black men cannot be wounded. Black men have been taught that it's unmanly to be emotionally or mentally broken. But there's nothing that's probably further from the truth because we're also human. This frame of mind that we hold, it has kept us stuck in a pattern of re-traumatization. We stay trapped in the cycle, victimizing others and engaging in self-harm and emotional pain to ourselves. Black men are living with a tremendous amount of pain. And a baby is a good example of this. Though we're taught to ignore the pain, the pain doesn't ignore us. And our sexual practices is a major outlet for the hurt that is in us. That's how we try to get rid of the pain. 
And sadly, one of the most taught and widely used strategies to cope with these, this pain and these internal struggles is the distraction of sex. So many of us black men have not received the help that we need to overcome internal issues. But instead, we have used sex and women as a way to cope, as a way to extract, distract, as a way of ignoring, uh, as a way to not deal with the real source of our problems. We use sex. Some men turn to drugs. Some men turn to alcohol. Some men might turn to gambling. Some men turn to all types of vices to alleviate the pain. But all roles for so many black men always lead back to sex. Whether it's through sexual intercourse, whether it's through going to strip clubs, whether it's through the viewing of pornography, whether it's through cheating or prostitution, sex is the number one coping technique that a lot of us black men have been taught to use. We think that it's gonna, that it's gonna soothe the pain you, that's the way we deal with stress. That's the way we distract ourselves from frustration. That's how we escape depression. That's how we fill up that feeling of abandonment. That's how we overcome grief. That's how we boost our own low self-esteem. That's how we clear our heads when we're confused. We think sex is the cure for all our pains. When we feel that we have a lack of control in life, the only thing that we try to control whatever is around us, and usually the access to sex is that one thing that we can control. But it, this doesn't only apply to the baby. You know, this is a description that is another description that so many Black men fit. So many of us do this. That phrase, hurt people, hurt people, explains what happens when we use sex as a coping technique. When we learn to set to when we learn to turn to sex to make ourselves feel better, we end up causing more pain to ourselves than the person that we're with. When we are wounded, when we're scarred, we bleed on other people. By choosing to have sex opposed to deal and healing ourselves. We use women like sex. We use women in sex just like Band-Aids. You know, we want them to cover up the parts that are injured, but then we discard them when we no longer want them or we no longer need them. The situation with the baby is a perfect, perfect example. A lot of the videos that I've seen is him um, trying to get the young lady to leave, trying to kick her out. You know, he's trying to discard her. And, and if he was an athlete, you probably can relate to this analogy. You know, there's times when we are injured, but we still try to play in the game instead of getting healed. You know, we try to overlook the pain and hope that it was just going to go away. We try to suck it up uh, because we say that because we're taught that showing any type of pain as a black man is a sign of weakness well we don't tell anyone about the pain you know because we don't want to miss out on, on playing or we don't want them to look at us differently so we keep that pain to ourselves but what usually happens is that we end up not only further injuring ourselves but we also injured our team because we're not performing to our potential because we're trying to play through the pain. And we do the same thing when it comes to relationships and, and women um, and, and sex. Instead of dealing with the pain, we still go out there and date. We still try to entertain women and, and, and we're spilling our pain on, on top of them. You know, sometimes we may acknowledge that that we're hurt. We might acknowledge that we're unhealthy, but we keep on playing. We keep on dating. We keep on having sex. 
thinking that that's going to help it, you know. And eventually, if we do that long enough, we start to project that pain on that person that we're with. We might even turn against them and, and believe that they're the cause of our pain because we haven't dealt with it. Instead of taking out the time to heal, we try to use sex to, to, as a temporary pain relief. Men, we have to find real healing, not sexual healing or we will continuously find ourselves a situation just like the baby. Dealing with multiple baby mothers and multiple baby, multiple women, going back and forth between court for child support or custody battles, arguing with women that we don't even want in our lives, but too late now because we've created our life with them. We'll stay searching, constantly searching for some type of validation, some type of acceptance through sex because we, because we don't find a proper healing. We don't look for the proper validation in ourselves. We'll continue to hurt others because we never develop the skills to heal ourselves. We'll continue to pass down generational curses to our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. Because that's how these things happen. Depression can be passed down, if not gen genetically, just by the way we cope. It's a taught, it's a taught behavior. So we sit and watch the baby situation because it's a reflection of us. He is I and I am him. But I don't want you to look at this situation just as entertainment. And I don't want you to look at the situation as a way to justify our poor decisions and our poor behavior. I want you to look at this situation like you're looking at a mirror and figure out where you need to heal, where you need to find proper and appropriate healing opposed to sexual healing. I've, I've tried to cover up my hurt many times by jumping under the cover of with covers with women. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't work. You know, that never heals the pain. We have to find the right way to get over our trauma, get over our depression, get over our past disappointments and finding or looking for women to have sex with is not the way. This is the sexual miseducation, or sexual miseducation of Black men in America. I'm your host, A.B. Bracewell. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and let's have this conversation. God bless.